All right. So um, we we talked about this in class um, a bit uh, in the well the the live lecture part at least, and um, right this would uh, this image here or if you guys do a search for you know just an octahedral sigma only molecular orbital diagram, uh, keeping one uh, keeping a picture of that around is going to be useful just so you guys kind of are familiar with what we're going to be doing. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about just what happens with these molecular orbitals and what we can get from them and, and some, some other useful information from us, right? So a little bit more background. Um, all right. So if we just take our simple uh, sigma, our simple sigma only diagram, right? And we've got our octahedral splitting here. So we've got our uh, EG star and our T2G, right? And remember the EG star means that it's anti-bonding, um, and then the T2G is, you know, our non-bonding orbital. Now, I was specific with what I had talked about earlier in that uh, the, if we, if we start with a sigma only, that means only single bonds are going to get formed, right? Only sigma bonds are going to get formed between the ligands and the metal in itself. But we can have pi donors, and uh, let's do uh, pi acceptors. And what that means is that uh, when we're talking about pi donors or pi acceptors, we're talking about from the ligands themselves, right? So ligands can be classified as donors or acceptors of pi bonds. And whether they're a donor or acceptor is going to change delta octahedral, okay? Or I should technically do something like that, right? Delta octahedral, delta O. And remember, changing delta octahedral is going to change high spin, right? High spin or low spin, right? Because we have that interplay between whether we can pair the electrons and the cost that comes from that, or whether to promote electrons from one set to the other, okay? Anyway, so at the end of the day, right, we need to look at the ligands that we have and make an assessment as to whether they can be pi donors or pi acceptors, and that's going to change our delta octahedral, and that's going to help us determine whether we're high spin or low spin, okay? So let's take a look at this, right? I'm just going to, since we only care about the metal orbitals, Sort of, I guess. I, I guess that's a safe statement to make, right? Really, the metal orbitals are the one that's going to be impacted. So let me bring in a pi donor ligand set, okay? A pi donor ligand set is going to look something like this, okay? So a pi donor ligand set is going to have filled, right, filled pi orbitals of T2G symmetry, okay? Filled orbitals of T2G symmetry. Now, what, what does that mean, or how does this impact things, or blah, 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 right? So, if you imagine, right, I could take this green T2G set, okay, and it would be somewhere around here, okay? It would be somewhere around here in my uh, complete molecular orbital diagram. So it's just another set added to the sigma, okay? So I'm just adding on to the ligand set over here, although, as you can see, if we try and stick this all together, it really becomes clustered very quickly. Although, again, you can take a look online and look for sigma uh, pi donor molecular orbital diagram, and it's going to um, and, you know, it's going to show you a picture. In fact, what I'll probably do sometime at near the end of this lecture, I'll, you know, I'll probably take a quick pause and see if I can find a good picture for you guys, okay? But here's what's going to happen. So, uh, if we have a pi donor ligand, right, they've got T2G symmetry orbitals or pi type symmetry, okay? I, I keep talking about these T2G sets and stuff, and I know we kind of skipped over a lot of this. So remember, what we're really just playing here is the matching game, right? T2G can match with T2G to make a bond, right? And so we're just we're just playing a matching game is what it is, okay? Let me take these and move it over here, okay? So here's what's going to happen. 
So as soon as we introduce these T2G set, right, we can start to see what new types of interactions are going to get made. Now the EG star set is not going to move, okay? The EG star set's not going to move because it has a different symmetry, they can't line up, whichever way you want to think about it, okay? But what can happen is the T2G set can interact with each other. And what's going to happen is this. Um, let's do this in... Oh, uh, bum, 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 bum. let's say blue, okay? So the T2G set can interact to make a bonding combination. So this is our T2G bonding combination. Whoa, sorry about that. And it can also make an corresponding anti-bonding combination set. So take a look at what happened here, okay? Two very important things. Remember this was the original delta octahedral. Now here is the new delta octahedral. So what happens? So when you have a pi donor, it shrinks delta octahedral, which tends to lead to more high spin systems, right? If you've got a small change in energy between the two sets, then it tends to lead to high spin systems. Okay, and it also turns our T2G set into an antibonding orbital. Now remember we talked about this in class also, right? The more you populate antibonding orbitals, the weaker the bonds tend to be. And remember we're talking about weakening bonds to ligands, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, right? It just is a thing that we have to pay attention to. Okay. So a couple things to pay attention to here. We have to have a fill T2G set on our ligands, right? Remember this is our ligand side over here. And that has to be close in energy to the starting T2G set of the, uh, of the metal over here, right? So these have to be close enough in energy that we can form a bond and an anti-bonding combination. And don't worry, I'll give you guys some examples of pi donors and pi acceptors in just a bit, right? But there's a couple things we have to set up, right? We have to have a T2G set. It has to be close enough in energy to interact with the metal itself. And when we have a pi donor, it's going to turn our T2G set on the metal into an antibonding. It's going to shrink delta octahedral, okay? All right, so let's go to the other end here, right? We'll set up the similar, let's see, I'm using red. Uh, we'll set up the the same kind of scenario here, All right? There's our EG set on our metal. Here's our starting T2G set from our sigma only, right? So with a pi donor, right, we've got a T2G set down here also that's filled, okay? But it's lower in energy so that can't really interact with the metal orbitals. But if you have a T2G set that's filled, you're also going to have a T2G star set up here. So this is our corresponding anti-bonding orbital set on our ligand. And these are close enough in energy to interact now. So watch, our EG set's going to come over, right? And now we can start to interact. I think we did it in blue last time, right? Yep. Now we can start to interact the antibonding orbital set on the ligands in red with our T2G set on the metal, right? So we make a new T2G bonding combination, right? And we make the corresponding T2G antibonding combination. And you guys can see what's happening here, right? Delta octahedral to delta octahedral. So this is our uh, pi acceptor ligands. So a pi acceptor ligand means that we have antibonding orbitals on the ligands themselves, which interact with the T2G set on the metal which increases delta octahedral, which tends to lead towards low spin systems. Now, I have to make a point here. 
And you got to think about what I mean here. So what are we talking about with pi acceptor ligands? Well, basically what that means is I have to have metal, excuse me, I have to have electrons in my T2G set. Um, let me use a different color here. That's not showing up too well. Uh, buh, 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 yellow. Okay. I have to have electrons in my T2G set on the metal. And then, right, those are put into the new T2G set between the ligand metal complex. So when we're talking about pi acceptors, it means the ligands are accepting pi electrons into their orbitals, okay? And the pi donors means we're donating into the metal itself. Now that's not going to be so important for us for this course, but it's just something that kind of that I want to keep track with, okay? So pi acceptors and pi donor ligands. And those are going to change delta octahedral. And so remember, from class, we talked about oxidation state changing delta octahedral and the class of ligands that are bound to the metal, right? The class of ligands that are bound to the metal are going to change delta octahedral also. So I'm just flipping through my notes here. All right, sorry, took a quick pause there because I figured it'd be better for me just to kind of write some of this stuff out rather than, you know, me try and talk while I write and all this kind of stuff. So if you guys want to pause here and just kind of take a peek at this, uh, you don't really need to write this down because you can always just look this up. But I'm just giving you guys an example here so we can just talk real briefly about pi donors and pi acceptors and all this kind of thing here. So taking a look at pi donors, right, we have things like oxides and nitrides and alkoxides and aminos and uh, uh, halides, all this kind of stuff here. What I want to point out is that, um, again, if you want to sit here and memorize things, you know, knock yourself out. But let's say we have some kind of atom that's bound to a metal, Okay. If you've got if you've got uh, a set of electrons around that metal, excuse me. If you've got a set of electrons around that um, that atom, typically you can donate those lone pairs into the metal itself. So really, if you go through and you take a look at oxides versus nitrides and halides and all this kind of stuff, those are atoms that have an excess number of lone pairs around the metal them excuse me around the atom themselves which they can donate to the metal so really it's kind of like uh if you guys think back to organic chemistry when you guys were thinking about um electrophilic aromatic substitution and how we could donate things into the into the pi system of a ring right we had ortho para directors and activators and all this kind of idea in there the same kind of ideas at play here right if you can donate electron density into the metal then you're you know you're typically going to donate that through a pi bond now i want to put a caveat here we're not going to talk about it but there's also sigma donors which you know kind of changes things up too right but um so I don't want to I don't want to give the impression this is the only thing to pay attention to, but uh, really just you're looking for lone pairs, and there's just kind of an example here: oxides and halides and all that kind of stuff. Okay, pi acceptors, right? We can kind of um, see what's going on here. Pi acceptors, we're typically going to have pi bonds on the ligands themselves. Okay, so if we have a uh, metal, right, bound to a cyano group, okay. The antibonding orbitals from these pi bonds here, right, are interacting with the metal, and we can accept pi electrons back into the ligand. Now, the phosphenes and amines are a little bit weird, so just take my word for it. You can look it up online. There's an explanation for why those are pi acceptors. They don't have pi bonds in them, but it has to deal with molecular orbital theory and blah, 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 blah. Super cool, super interesting, but um, not something... I don't need you guys to know that kind of nitty-gritty detail, right? Remember, this is just a, a... We are skimming the top and the surface of inorganic chemistry here, okay? Aromatic rings such as pyridine are pi acceptor. Um... Again, this has to deal with they have pi bonds and just the metal can line up with them and we can donate back into the um, into the uh, ring itself there, okay? So this is kind of the brief overview of pi acceptors and pi donors. Um, this is going to change our delta octahedral, which basically comes back to the point that I wanted to make is that as we change the energy 
of our, our of our d electrons we switch from high spin to low spin and that's going to be something that's going to be important to help us determine which uh, orbitals are being populated and what that does with our bonding to our ligands themselves okay okay so as promised i did a quick search to find you guys um, an example of a complete molecular orbital diagram with pi donor ligands and pi acceptor ligands uh, if you look at the top here, this isn't my work. I'm not taking credit for this, right? There's the reference up there. So thank you to whoever made this. This is about as clear a uh, molecular orbital diagram as we can get. Um, if you take a look, um, right, this is a cobalt uh, hexafluorido complex here, right? So fluorine is a good uh, pi, uh, excuse me, a good pi donor, right? There's our T2G set down there on the right hand. Oh, there's a little typo. <laughs> I didn't even catch this until now, right? They talk about, you know, cobalt hexafluoride in the bottom there. They got copper copper and water. I don't know what's going on. So ignore the copper and the water down there at the bottom. Water is not a pi donor. Um, not really a good one at all anyway. But anyway, so uh, this is what we were trying to show, right? We've got a weakly anti-bonding T2G set. It's got a smaller delta octahedral. The EG, right, uh, is, is going to be anti-bonding. And we can see that the filled pi orbitals on the ligands, which is on the right-hand side here, is what makes a new bonding combination and an anti-bonding combination there, right? So within this same, you know, which within this same uh, uh, set of slides here that whoever made, made, right? Here's our pi acceptor molecular orbital diagram. Uh, they've actually got this one labeled properly at the bottom, right? So on the left-hand side is the chromium, on the right-hand side is the carbonyls, the COs, the carbon monoxides. And you can see how now, you know, because of the change in energy and the uh, the pi star orbitals and um, you know the symmetry that's involved with those, right? Now we can make an we can make a combi uh, a bonding combination, right? We can make a bonding combination with our T2G sets to uh, increase delta octahedral. Okay. So uh, if you guys want to pause and pull this stuff up, all I did was do, you know, did a Google search for MO diagram for pi acceptor or pi donors, and there's a million examples out there, but this one was one of the clearest ones. All right. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys were able to follow along with this, and hopefully this makes sense, and I will see you guys in the next video. Maybe if I can stop this.